Welcome to another episode of the Soul Mind of Business Podcast. This is J.D. Ross, and today's guests are going to be Fred Robinson and Tom Parker of Body Helix. Now listen in to this podcast, and we're going to do some introductions as soon as we start out, but listen into this. They're a veteran-owned business, and their core values, and part of their core values is they do what is best for the consumer. You hear it throughout the entire message, and think about how refreshing that is these days. Again, I'll do the intro in the very beginning, but Fred is a North Carolina Tennis Hall of Fame member, and Tom has been voted top doctor in Charlotte Magazine for multiple years. So listen in. I know you're going to enjoy this podcast. Take care. So Tom and Fred, thanks for being on a podcast. Oh, yeah. Glad to be here. I'm yeah, going to do uh, it. Thank you, J.D. Yes, sir. So I'm oh. going to do a quick intro here. Tom uh, Park, you're the CEO of uh, Body Helix. Congratulations, as we said on the promotion. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And now uh, you are also the top doctor in the Charlotte Magazine for multiple years. That's really saying something. Congratulations, because Charlotte has some fantastic doctors. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Fred, you're the founder. Do you have a new title yet, or is it just founder? Or you see something, or is it is that the proper title for you, Fred? No, that's a proper title. I'm just one of the team members. That's what, I, and knowing you, that's how I thought you would put that. Very uh, high level of humility. So you're the founder, also in the North Carolina Tennis Hall of Fame. Uh, 76, let me get this right. 76, you've been, 76 times you've been the world and U.S. medalist tennis champion, a U.S. national grand slam title holder in both singles and doubles. And I mean, that's extraordinary. And also I read some of your blog posts. They're excellent. You guys, I didn't know, but Thank being you. being on this call with you, I think my IQ went up a few points. It's not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> That's not saying much, but it went up a few points. So you guys founded Body Helix in 2008. So you're Correct. both very, both very, very accomplished in what in, in your prior professions. Why did you start Body Helix? Red. Yeah, I'll tell you, um, J.D., as a, as a tennis player and as a coach working with many level players, as you know, and the audience may not know, J.D. and I now battle it out on the pickleball court, which is exciting. Um, <laughs> but with the body helix, <laughs> I found as a coach, everybody who trains hard is going to get hurt. It's not, it's not whether you're going to get hurt. It's just simply when. We all get injured. And when I got injured, when my students got injured, uh, we would go and we would look for compression comp, uh, products and they just weren't suitable, in my opinion. So that's kind of that was the start of how could, number one, why don't we have top level compression? And then number two, is there something that I could do to maybe help this along? So I, I sort of raised my hand up. I volunteered and I said, let me figure this thing out. And uh, that started the journey with the Body Helix and looking for the best material possible. Tom Parker was a good friend, good tennis buddy. I immediately went to him. I had some products. It was pretty rough at the beginning. And I said, uh, you know, what do you think about this? And uh, I'll let you tell him, Tom, I'll let you explain what you said. Yeah. So initially I thought Fred was taking advantage of my friendship and, and seeking my opinion. So I said, yeah, I said, yeah, I'll look at this stuff, Fred. And, and to myself, I said, and I'll tell you, it's no good. And so I, I tried it and I came back to Fred and said, is there any chance to be an investor in this company? Because mm -hmm. I was quite impressed with the products. We can get into that a little bit later. And, um, and then, um, I made a, an investment in the company, and as the, the existing staff fell by the wayside, I became the person who everybody knew less than. Not that I knew more than, but they all knew less than me, so I ended up in some sort of administrative role. Yeah. And at the same time, um, have been conscientious to make sure that Body Helix doesn't make a bunch of uh, unfounded claims. We're honest with our promotions, which, and we have come to learn that there are many, many businesses that are not honest with their promotions. We'll mm -hmm. probably get into that a little bit later with some of the drinks, but mm -hmm. 
And then, and then uh, at the same time that I thought Fred had a, a good idea, I was interested in sort of seeing how a computer business or an online business ran, having had no experience just with the, in my current or my prior job as a physician. I hated the electronic medical record, but I think when the computer is used appropriately, it's beneficial. <clears throat> so that's how I got involved. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to go. I'm just going to get right to the point on a few things on the compression. So the problems I've had, I have tried two of your products, by the way, and, mm -hmm. and love the two I've tried. We'll get to that in a oh, minute. Thank you. But you started with the compression. And my experience with when I've bought those, I've been fortunate. I haven't had to use them very often, but they don't fit right. They slide down. I'm not so sure they're of any value. How have you guys fixed that? So um, I'll look to the. Yeah, we like to think there are three factors about our product that make it different from everybody else. One is that it's a closed cell rubber and it's a non-petroleum based closed cell rubber. So it's environmentally friendly. <clears throat> the second is that it, it does not absorb sweat, which is a, a function of the closed cell rubber. It's like tiny, tiny, tiny balloons that are make, that make up the neoprene. Uh, the traditional products absorb sweat. The tiny balloons fill up with sweat and sebum. They promote bacterial overgrowth. They, they have an unpleasant aroma, and ours don't. And then the third thing, which is uh, maybe the, the, um, the most important, is that it doesn't um, restrict motion. It stretches more than the human body. Uh, and then also we have the sweat-activated adherence. So we've had runners, marathon runners, who will put one of our products on their lower extremities, either a thigh, knee, calf, or ankle. And the the helix will not budge while they run a marathon, which is really a, a quite a valuable asset to have in a product like a compression product. So I'm going to try that one because I tried something with on the, on the knee once, and I could not. I was playing pickleball. I had to keep pulling that thing up. I could not get it to stay up. And it kept sliding down. Now, now I've, I have tried your shirts. I ordered some of your, your product, and I got it last week. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, uh, I know you wouldn't if I ask you a trade secret. You're not going to get away anyway. But the <laughs> shirt was terrific. Is it saying it, what? Um, what makes it different? Because one, one, it didn't, it didn't. Uh, it, I mean, I, I sweat a lot. I sweat quick, but it didn't get heavy. It, it didn't get soaked up. It, uh, it felt great. It felt great from the moment I put it on to the moment that I took it off, regardless of how much I played. What has made the shirt different than most? So, so this, this gets into the physiology of heat dissipation and the body's normal mechanism for that is partly to increase blood flow to the skin and sweat. And then the heat of evaporation causes the, your body's temperature to stay in control. So the, these fabrics that wick moisture away from the, the skin actually just absorb the, the um, sweat. So then the, our fabric has a large surface area because of the way it's constructed, which gives a larger area for the sweat to be evaporated and help to keep things cool. Plus the material is really thin so it doesn't soak up the sweat like a cotton shirt would. Um, you may notice that the, the sweat may pour from your shirt onto your shorts, but um, that's just because the fabric is so thin, it will not hold water. Yeah. Yeah, it has, from the, from the moment I took it out of the package, it has a different kind of look in the material. Yeah, that's, that's if you look at it, it's a large surface area. Mm -hmm. All those little deep, uh, or not deep, but those little grooves and, and patterns in the fabric allow sweat to be evaporated better. Now you have another product and thank you for last, um, let me ask all these questions about it because it, it is, um, everything I've purchased from you has been um, extraordinary, right? And, well, and unique. Well, now, we're all glad to hear that. You have an yeah, energy. Yeah, thank you. Yo, yes, I'm sorry to interrupt there. So it's, it's been, now I am, into the energy drink. Am I saying that, is that the best way to put it? The energy drink? So, so it's a, it's a rehydrating. It contains electrolytes, fluids, um, and a uh, carbohydrate 
product substitute in there that's slow, slow release. We are coming out with one that's going to have caffeine, so that might provide a little bit of energy. Okay, so it's rehydrating, which is which is better than what I would wanted in the first place because, as I mentioned earlier, I have a habit of, um, and certainly something about pickleball is you get up a sweat quick. So I have trouble getting to the point to where I get so thirsty that you can't quench the thirst. Mm-hmm. So what you tend to turn into is I'll give up on water at one point and say, okay, I can't get, the, the water's not doing it for me. And then I'll switch to these other, until I got yours, these other <laughs> energy drinks. <laughs> and, uh, and they still didn't do it. So, but yours is different. What makes it different? So I think you're probably talking about most of the, the sugared drinks, the candy water, their, uh, to, to name names, we got to Gatorade and Powerade and everything else. And if you look at the ingredients in there, it's primarily a sweet tasting sugar and then some uh, combination of electrolytes and um, emulsifying agents and coloring agents and a bunch of other substances that don't really contribute to rehydrating. The challenge that happens physiologically with exercise is that you lose fluid, you lose water. Plus in sweat, you also have minerals, you have electrolytes. So what our drink does is replace what you lose in sweat. It, it's designed to sort of match what we know about the electrolyte content of sweat. And it's made, it's made for athletes of all uh, skill levels, as you're probably aware the super conditioned athlete really doesn't have a problem with the sweat and electrolyte loss. If you look, and, and this is kind of interesting, if you look at Roger Federer as a tennis player, the guy doesn't even get his shirt wet. And if you look at Nadal, it looks like he jumped out of a shower. So most of the athletes are not the elite trained athletes who don't have a challenge with fluid and electrolyte replacement. Most of them are guys like me who are having fun. They have a regular job. They get out and exercise because they think it's fun, but they also can get into the same sort of physiologic and metabolic problems that an athlete who is fully trained can, can get into. So I think probably what you found was a benefit with the rehydration and the electrolyte replacement. That's, that's what we know we affect. And any claim otherwise that this is providing a bunch of energy to you is, is really not based on any science. I think what we're doing is allowing your body to perform when it's in a maximal state of metabolic balance. Yeah, yeah. I noticed I noticed when Fred pointed it out to me, thanks Fred, in a very subtle, elegant <laughs> way. <laughs> kind of like he plays tennis too, right? Somebody said, do yeah. not play tennis against Fred. <laughs> he never misses and yeah. he puts it on a dime. Uh, <laughs> I started looking at what I was drinking and the, and the top ingredient in some of these things. And I went, w- wait a minute. Now the top one is sugar or close to the top is sugar. And, and what right. makes y'all's different is it's plant-based, right? It's plant-based. Fred, you may want to get into the, um, the physiology of the, the sugar, pre- the carbohydrate preparation that we have. Yeah, we we have a complex carb, and it's a uh, pea starch that we use. But what I what I what I'll give you is a little different picture, and it's one thing about Body Helix. You know, we're veteran owned. We have U.S. manufacturing, but our core values are really. I think that's the main thing with our company. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we are a salutogenic company. That word might not be familiar with most people, but salutogenic means that everything that we do is for your well-being. So, J.D., when we make a product, when we make a drink, we cannot put in any ingredients. (coughs) Excuse me. We cannot put any ingredients in there that are unhealthy. We cannot make a drink that is loaded with sugar. We cannot make a drink that has uh, artificial dyes. We cannot make a drink that has emulsifiers. We have to figure out how to make a high-performance endurance fuel for you that does not have harmful ingredients. Our core value is not profit. 
if you go to any of the large companies in the world, the big Pepsi's, Cokes, the, the, the list is long. The same thing with food. The core value there is profit. And so they're going to put in from a starting point, they're going to develop and put into their drinks one thing. How do we make this taste mm. in, in a manner that nobody can walk away from that? So I would give you a couple of scenarios and here's how marketing and um, the world I think has really turned upside down and body helix, we approach things a little differently. Would it be okay if we're going out to play pickleball and I'm your coach and you're walking on the court and I said, JD, hang on, I have some candy for you. I want you to eat this candy while we're playing today. What would you think if I did that? No, thanks. No, what are you trying to do? You're not looking out for my best interest is the thing. Yeah. I'm not looking out for your best interest. It would be crazy. That's a crazy thought. You would look at me and say like, coach, are you crazy? Why would you ask me to eat candy when I'm going out? But if you look at what's happening today in the sports and professional sports, the thing that really uh, bothered me the most is with collegiate sports. All of these young athletes are being handed a drink and it's essentially just it's candy water. That's all it is. And they're being handed these drinks and they're being sent out on the court or sent out on the field to play. And that bothered me. And that bothered me enough that Tom and I and our team said, we need to do something about this. We're not a big multi-billion dollar company, but we do have a billion dollar heart. And we wanted to try and do something about it. Hence the uh, Hydro Helix. We, we, put in a lot of work. I have other buddies that are tennis buddies that are pros. We get out on the court, we test things. We look at what are, are there good drinks on the market? What are they? Um, what ingredients do they use? How can we make the highest quality drink possible? And so we've spent a lot of time testing it ourselves and we came up with this formula. And so it's really, it's really an approach to business. And the approach to business is first, JD, how do we provide something for your well-being? Yes, we're in business. Yes, we want to grow. Yes, we have to make profit to be here. But our core value is how do we take care of you? Now, interestingly enough, with the compression, the same thing happened. If you look at uh, the U.S. Opens coming up and you watch what happens this year and it happens every year and it really just breaks my heart when I see this. You have elite athletes out there. They're going out on the court. You'll see it particularly with the women's tennis. They're going to pull their hamstrings. Uh, they're going to stop the match. They'll go over and sit on the bench. You, you, you're you're mm -hmm. steeped in tennis too. You know what I'm talking about. A trainer will come out and they're going to pull out a technology that's over 100 years old. They're going to wrap an elastic bandage around their thigh <clears throat> and they're going to send them back out on the court. That bothered me. In my mind, I'm thinking, why would we take something that's over a hundred year old technology, put it on some of the most elite athletes in the world and send them back out on the court to play. It's upside down thinking. Um, and we do this in sports compression. We do this in nutrition. I'll give you another uh, classic example that I really like. I'll share with you. You have a young child, they're getting ready to go to school when they're five or six years old. Little JD, he's coming out he, and he's going to have breakfast. Mom comes out and she puts on the table for little JD for his breakfast this morning. I'm going to give you a bottle of soda and I'm going to give you a piece of cake because I want you to have good nutrition. I want you to go out there and conquer the world. Well, yeah, you're laughing. You're, well, that's yeah. crazy. No one would do that. Okay. Well, let's just, let's look at the world from body helix perspective. And we kind of turn things upside down because marketing has put us in a place where we think this is okay. We think this is, this is fine and it isn't. So what we do is we pour a glass of orange juice and we put a blueberry muffin on the table and go, no, 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 you can't have cake and soda. You're going to have a blueberry muffin. Mm -hmm. You're going to have an orange juice. Now, if you stop and look at the nutrition and the ingredients that are in there, they're the same thing basically. But marketing has totally slowly shifted us out of you can't have cake you can't have soda but you could have a glass of orange juice or a glass of apple juice and you could have a blueberry muffin this would be good for you it's not good for you it's crazy and these things keep me up at night when i see this stuff it, it, no seriously it really bothers me because 
we know in America we have, you know, don't get me started on this, but we have all, we have the health crisis. We know what they are. It's, it's everywhere. And the reason we have that is big companies that are driven purely by profit has have slowly shifted us to a thinking point that this is okay. And, and I'm here to tell you it's, it's not okay. And, and, you know, that's why Body Helix is here. We're small. We're standing up against the big companies and we're saying, hey, we could do better. We know you're big. We know you have an infinite amount of resources. We don't. But even as small as we are, we can do some good things. We wish you would do some good things. And we challenge you to go ahead and step up to the plate, especially with the drinks. I mean, these companies use modern science and develop some really healthy drinks for athletes. They know how to do this. They're simply not doing it. So that's kind of, you know, the best way for me to explain without all of the science, who we are and what we do. It, it comes, it comes from the heart. We just are standing up saying, we need to stop this. We, you know, we can do better. And that's what we try to do. I want to hang on that for a minute. Yeah, I just, yeah, you said, you said a couple of things in there and because look, okay. we can talk about a compression. We can talk about a shirt. We can talk about a drink. Sure. We're not pitching those things. We're pitching what you're not even pitching. We're talking about what you're about. And that's why now I almost came out of the chair. You probably, someone that's viewing this. One, you're veteran owned. So thank you. Thank you very much for your service. Very extremely oh, thank you. grateful. And then you said something that you do not hear. You do not hear these days. I've never heard it. The core value is, I'm not going to say it right, so correct me. <clears throat> But essentially, you're trying to do what's best for the consumer. You're trying to be do what's best for the person drinking or wearing the shirt. That is not stated, or it's stated and not done. So you, you guys have a real passion for it. You're going to provide a product that is geared around what's best for the person drinking the product, not the number of sales that are going to go off, go out the doors. What is driving that? What about you guys is driving that value? Where did you get that value from? There's something that no. says, you're, you know what I'm <laughs> trying to say? It's a hard, what, what has put that in y'all to say, we're going to make the world a better place by providing something. You said this, turning things upside down. There's a yeah. passion there somewhere. Where did it come from? You know, I don't know with me. I, I When I was basically a child, I, at 18, I was serving in the 101st Airborne. So I, I kind of got the whole thing of, you know, our country, the freedom. We have an opportunity to serve. We have an opportunity to care for other people. Let's raise our hand. Let's help when we can. Um, and so I, I guess it has slowly come along. And as I, I, I love to read, I pour through books. Um, and I've looked at the stories that the companies tell, and we've gotten to a point where we're so far off kilter, somehow we have to pull back to common sense. I mean, we have to, I, I guess I just look at, look at the world differently. If you're going in and you're, let's say you're going to go buy a Tesla and we, we, and it's not a commercial for them. It's just an electric car. It's high technology. It, it's advanced technology. They and other companies are doing great things. And, and I like that. And I like that it's electric. You get your car and you're ready to drive off the lot. And I go, oh, hey, JD, hold on a minute. I want to put some special tires on these for you. Okay. And I go and I find 100-year-old technology tires. I bring out some wagon wheels. <laughs> and I go to put them on your car. <laughs> You're laughing. You go, that's crazy. You can't do that. Well, of course, I, you wouldn't let me do that. But that goes back to the athletes that are on the court. That's a 100-year-old technology. It's the same. This is how I see the world. When you have the athlete and you put a 100-year-old technology on them, that's like putting wagon wheels on a Tesla. It doesn't make any sense. I, I don't know how the big companies like WTA, ATP, USDA name them. Their revenue streams are their athletes. That's where all of their revenue is coming from. If you get hurt, I want to take the best care that I can of you. And we look at Body Helix, really, and we've talked about this in fun. We're, when, when you're playing pickleball, we're playing today or tomorrow, and I'm going to try to run you as hard as I can or somebody. Somebody gets hurt. 
Um, what we do is we're the pit crew. We're going to come out with our compression. We're going to put our compression on it. We're going to do the best we can to help you get back up and get running again because sport is really important to you. It's part of your lifestyle. It's part of how you're going to stay healthy. It's part of how you're going to live a long, healthy life. Professional ball teams, basketball, football, how can they possibly have athletes and put 100-year-old technology, feed them candy water? I don't know how this is possible, but it, it, like I said, these are the things that really, if you stop and think about it, and I know you are now, you'll get a burn. You'll want to, we can do something about that. I mean, we're better than this. Humanity is better than this, and I think it's time that we grew up and we started to really talk about these things in a real way. So. Yeah, it sure is. Thank you. And like when you hit those topics, yeah. I immediately said, yes, we have to do something. It reminds me of a term I hear at audience of one. <laughs> what you guys are always talk, <laughs> talking about is I care about you, like each individual consumer. I care yeah. about you. And that's what you keep stating. And, and by the way, for I, I made reference to this in the beginning, but on your website, you have blog post. Mm -hmm. And for people listening, we're going to put the link to the website in the show notes here, but they really ought, oh, really ought to read the blog, the blog post. They are excellent. I, I wrote, I read um, two or three of them already. I'm going to, mm -hmm. in fact, what I'm going to start doing on Fridays on this podcast is some read some blog posts that I found on business and yours is going to be one of them because they're that good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, so let me n name drop for me. I know you're in some places, feel comfortable. I know that you guys might be slow to, but go ahead. Cause I know there's some people trying or not just trying using your product. And so t tell me about who's using it and testing it and, how it's going. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> one of the guys that we were working with had access to Burt Fields. Burt Fields is a, um, a nationally and, and probably an internationally recognized sports medicine position. <clears throat> and, and uh, Burt Fields took a look at our stuff and he said the same thing I did when he first looked at it, which was, yeah, this is just some more compression, no big deal. And Bert had the same experience, the same impression that I did. He came back to, to us and said, um, I was wrong. You guys have something here. And so um, he, he's affiliated with the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill on the medical and the, the uh, faculty. And so they're not in a position to do paid endorsements or be spokespersons or anything like that but he is in a position to recommend it to his patients. Mm -hmm. So he has recommended it to his patients. And um, as, as you may be aware, he trains other sports medicine physicians who then go out into the community and into the, into the United States and practice. And so some of his disciples from across the country are, are big advocates of our stuff. And so we'll get uh, uh a number of referrals, especially from the Greensboro area or any of the other places where Bert's trainees have gone. So then uh, in addition to Bert Fields, who has no financial interest in the company, we got the Indianapolis Colts who are using our stuff. The offensive line loves our arm compression, our elbow compression for their infield combat. And then uh, we got a, a call recently here from the Mayo Clinic who is taking a look at evaluating our stuff. So these are, these are organizations that have an interest in keeping, in Bert's case, keeping his patients well, the Colts keeping their million dollar linemen well, the Mayo Clinic and making sure that they're providing the best products, the best recommendations to their customers. There's an orthopedic surgeon in Greensboro who who uh, he must use our stuff on his post-op patients because every month we get a large order for this guy who then distributes it through his practice. Um, he has not given us permission to use his name and, um, I, and we don't know why, but I think it's for the well-being of his patients and he just wants to focus on doing what's best for them. And then on the tennis side, Fred has made contact with a, a number of uh, former professionals um, uh, Fred, who, who's the uh, Wimbledon winner from uh, Florida? Joanne. Yeah. 
And Joanne uh, Russell has yeah. worn our product. She's former Wimbledon champion. Mark Whitford's won over a dozen Grand Slams, so one of the greatest doubles players of all time. And he's worn our products and loves them. What I found at the national level, uh, when I play at the national tournaments, and people understand this, is most of the, play the players know who I am when, when we're playing our nationals. They'll try the products because they know me. Uh, what you'll find when you get to the quarterfinals of the national champions is almost championships is almost everyone is wearing them. They try them because they know me. They wear them because they work and they work better than anything else. And you'll see by the time you get to the quarterfinals, everybody's got something on. It's just body health is part of that. Um, I will tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the challenges for us being a small company is we will make products for the professional teams. And this is heartbreaking. We're America made, they're not made in China. Um, we'll make our products for the, special, for the professional teams. And then we're required to take our logos off the outside oh. of our products. Mm -hmm. And then they go out on the field with our products because the logos that you're gonna see, and you know who they are, the main logos own the teams, they own the sports, and they own the athletes. And so the doors completely shut in our face. We're com totally locked out of that. But yet they still know, and they'll even call us for the products. They know we make the best products, but no, you cannot put your logos on them. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, as a veteran and a U.S. company, that, that hurts. And that's upsetting. And we're going to grow. We're going to keep this thing going until we change that because... I just, I have an issue with that. You mm -hmm. guys are on a mission. He keeps saying we're yeah, going to keep yeah, it going we and we're going to go. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was making, you see me looking down, I'm making notes. So the people that you mentioned are trying this product, and I want to point this out to the viewers and listeners. We're not talking about a, a store. Notice, it wasn't a store. It was, these are people that have a lot of stake in recommending the product or the product working. This wasn't, oh, we just got into the store and we're selling it because they're looking at the profit margin or they're looking at how many units are going to get the door. You're talking about people that have a stake in the product actually working, which you mentioned some names. If it doesn't work, it, it's the consequences are great for them if it doesn't work. All right. So let's um, let me ask you this. What is the best way? What is the best way for someone to support your your company, because right now we're listening and it's like me, I'm going, I had no idea that this guy I met playing pickleball uh, on the court was so involved in something so profound, veteran based core values that you don't hear, you don't hear them or you hear them and they're not lived out and turning the business world or turning things upside down. I'd put the business word. What is the best way uh, that we can support you guys and your company? Well, that, that's really quite a charitable question because uh, we're, we're not really looking for charitable support. What, mm -hmm. we're, what, we, what we have is if you get hurt, we're going to be there. If you have an injury for which compression is beneficial, we're the product that's going to be the best for you. And it's the same thing with hydration. Um, word of mouth is uh, our best method by which we get new customers. And I guess that would be the answer to your question. If somebody likes our stuff, mention it to your neighbor, mention it to your, your opponents. After you beat somebody, point out to them that they're not wearing any body helix. And... <laughs> by the way, I'm seeing it with some people that are beating me, by the way. <laughs> they're wearing body helix stuff. So, so I guess back to, to sum up that answer here is this. Buy, buy, buy. Sent, let other people know what you're wearing. You're buying from somebody that has values you do not hear these days, and they are not lived out, and it's veteran-owned and made in the U.S., so buy them. Uh, what's next? What's next for you guys? Is there something new on the horizon that you're, that you're checking out? Boy, I tell you, the, the hardest thing for us is marketing. Mm. We don't have a, um, a paid spokesperson. I find it a little bit paradoxical that it they have uh, these football players advertising the copper containing stuff. And, and um, as a physician, 
I'm not going to go ask a former football player who had an injury what what's the best way to take care of them. So um, our biggest challenge is finding people who are going to say to their neighbor, hey, check this out. Mm. If you care about the environment and you are going to play hurt, here's a product, here's a company that's going to be there for you. That's it. Fred, do you have any other ideas on how people can um, – uh, maybe knock down some of the barriers to us getting through the WTA and ATP trainers and, and so on. You know, that's a challenge. It's a challenge we face every day. We get knocked down. Um, but what we do is we get right back up and um, we just keep facing mammoth companies in front of us. I challenge them to, to step up the plate and, and, and start elevating their gear and their products. Um, you mentioned the blog. I thank you for mentioning our blog. In the blog, when I write the blogs or Tom writes uh, treatment for me, I get into a little bit more of the co my coaching background of maybe mental toughness or something like that. Every time I write a blog, I think about how can I help somebody? How can I help uh, students? How can I help tennis academies? How can I give them information that they may not be hearing? How can I say something that perhaps their coach can't say because it's too delicate it, and it might offend a parent. I just tell them the truth. Um, our marketing approach is let's just tell people what's real. And hopefully, you know, when we point out things like I did with a, with a car or nutrition and you look at it, you start laughing, you go, yeah, how do these things get upside down? Let's turn them back over and let's just put out good information for people. And it is Tom has spent his life as a caregiver. You know, he's a physician. Coaches are caregivers to children. They're trying to help people, you know, be involved in a sto uh, sport and improve their lifestyle. So it's it's really a caregiving approach. And I would challenge people when you when you go to support a company, you're voting. Your dollars are going somewhere. Look at that company and ask yourself: Is that a salutogenic company? Is that company? Did they really have your best interest at heart or not and if they don't and it's food or drink or whatever it is stop look at your family and say what are we doing mm. wow you guys just kind of landed the plane that was uh that was terrific and, and for the viewers and listeners <laughs> you may pick up on this uh i don't ask anybody on here who if they've written a book i've read the book if they've written something online i've read the information online if they've developed a product i've tried the product yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, so it is it is that good. So you're going to be seeing me purchase more from you guys. So I'll do my part. Thank you. And and uh, again, thanks for just being a, re a, re a refreshing, how do I say this? In the business world, it's gotten a little bit turned. You're going to say, I'm going to use a different. We've got a little bit sideways. Mm -hmm. Business can have a profound <clears throat> impact on the world around us if done properly Sometimes I feel we've almost lost our way that we can't even remember our way back. Right. So, J.D., I have one more thing to add, and that is uh, getting to know you has been a, a privilege. And I'm watching what you're doing with your podcast. And when I'm talking about salutogenic companies, your approach is salutogenic. You are the – I mean – it's hard for you maybe when you're sitting behind the microphone to you know blow your own whistle, but I will tell knowing you what you're doing is deep core value. You are trying to bring something to the table. You're trying to bring a podcast to the world that is going to benefit people. How can I make this place a better place? And we need this right now. So I'm so impressed with the work that you're doing. And we, we, we want to support you in any way that we can. So... Um, Thank you. If you'd like to write a blog, please write a blog. We'll put it on Body Helix, and I'll give you a shout out. We're, we'd be delighted to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, yeah. Tom. I, I appreciate yeah. it very much. Uh, well, the best way to get in touch with you, I assume, is if I put the link on your <clears throat> on your website in the show notes mm -hmm. and on the social media outlets. That's the best way to, to reach out to you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm very humbled, too, by your kind words to be on here with you guys. Uh, I, I think we do have similar values. I'm not, maybe not yeah. far as long as you guys are, but it's great too. It's, it's always um, terrific to be on here with you. So thank you. And thank you for the product as well. And, 
And thank you for being a guest on here. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Thank you for having us, JD. Okay. See yeah. you guys. Yeah. All right. Okay. Bye. And this concludes another episode of the Soul Mind and Business Podcast. To check out some of our projects, look at circleofthepanda.com, the company that produced this, our parent company. And check it out. What's new at Circle of the Panda? We're going to start some more community service projects and some partnerships with a local school, and we're diving into the pickleball. So check us out at circleofthepanda.com. Uh, you can also find a link to Body Helix in the show notes right here. And, uh, and also on our website at circleofthepanda.com. We wish you all the best and peace.